I'm a scientist in the field of biochemistry, and I just wish I could talk shop with a farmer ant. Because biochemists, such as myself, we study chemical reactions in living organisms, and some ants are pros at cultivating beneficial chemical reactions. Now, I'm passionate about studying microbial chemical reactions. So microscopic organisms, or microbes, such as fungi and bacteria, they perform amazing tasks in nature. And if we understand these tasks on a detailed level, we can harness their power to produce biofuels, to produce bioproducts, even to produce therapeutics for human diseases. Learning from nature to leverage sustainable products is smart for our future. And humans have a long history of harnessing the power of microbes. An excellent and famous example of this is the production of penicillin from mold. So to discuss this, we're gonna go back in time. We're gonna go back in time to 1928. Dr. Alexander Fleming, he left on vacation. And when he returned, he found mold growing on his Petri dish of Staphylococcus bacteria. He noticed that the mold seemed to be actually preventing the bacteria around it from growing. He wanted mold more, so he dug into the details and he found that mold was actually producing a self-defense chemical that could kill the bacteria. And this chemical is very well known to all of us today since it's penicillin. So let's go back to present day now. So why are biochemists like myself, why are we excited about studying microbial chemical reactions now? Well, the reason is, is I think we're in a golden age of biochemistry. And what I mean by that is we now have the tools, we've developed the tools that we need to truly understand these complex microbial ecosystems on a molecular level. So we can get to see exactly how the activities, like the one we just talked about, how mold self-defense chemicals are being created. We can see how they occur in diverse natural ecosystems. So we can recreate these reactions and the beneficial chemicals in a lab setting. We can use them to benefit us. So my research tool of choice is mass spectrometry. And the molecules I study are enzymes and metabolites. Enzymes are protein molecules that catalyze chemical reactions in living organisms. They regulate that rate at which the chemical reaction proceeds to produce that important chemical or metabolite. And my research, it aims to understand and regulate enzymatic production of metabolites for bio-related products we want for our future. So can you imagine a future where your car is plant powered? Those are the goals we have, that's what we wanna to get to. And the development of bio-based fuels, bio-based materials, bio-based chemicals, they can lead us to a strong bioeconomy while also simultaneously reducing our dependence on fossil fuels. So the concept of a bioeconomy is a good thing. It means creating renewable biological resources and converting them into value-added products and bioenergy. So we're learning from nature. It's showing us how to take a renewable resource like plant material and transforming it into useful bio-based compounds that can help us in our everyday lives. So here I've brought up a picture. This picture is one of my favorite microbial systems I study. And my goal is to figure out how enzymes in the system are transforming plants into biofuels and also bioproducts. So what's one of the first things you notice about this picture? For me, it's the complexity. So visually, this microbial system is complex. And on the molecular level, it's even more complex. So what is this system? Well, this system is the leaf cutter ant fungal garden ecosystem, which is a naturally evolved multi-member system that is very, very efficient at breaking down plant material. So here's where I can talk shop with the farmer ant. I can ask that ant, how does this microbial ecosystem break down plant material at the molecular level so efficiently? But their analysis challenges to answer this question, as you can imagine from this picture and the inherent complexity. So complex microbial ecosystems, such as the fungal garden, they contain microhabitats with different species, different resources, different activities. And if we use bulk or more traditional measurements like bulk enzyme and metabolite measurements to characterize these gardens, this would average molecules, molecules from ants, from plants, from diverse bacterial and fungal species. This averaging is bad because it creates noise in our analysis and it dilutes the reactions of interest, often making them undetectable. So we need to do better. 
And we need to analyze complex environmental ecosystems like the leafcutter ant fungal garden on a very fine detail. We know those fine detail interactions. So that's what we built. We developed a novel mass spectrometry imaging tool to map and understand chemical reactions in complex ecosystems at a micro scale level. But before I get into those details on all the things we saw from our micro scale analyses, let's dig into this fascinating microbial system a little more. So leafcutter ants, they are dominant herbivores that can consume as much as 17% of leaf material produced in neotropic ecosystems. So what's a neotropic ecosystem? Well, it's like the rainforest. So I want each of you to picture what you think the rainforest looks like in your mind. And I want you to picture all that lush, green, leafy material you would expect to be there. So this microbial system, it can degrade up to 17% of all that leafy biomass that you're imagining right now. That's a lot. So we want to understand how it does it on a molecular level. And let's picture one more other thing. What do you think of when you think of leaf cutter ants? I bet you're thinking maybe back to a National Geographic magazine picture or maybe a Discovery Channel documentary where you have these leaf cutter ants and they're carrying these huge, large pieces of leaves and they're marching across the rainforest floor. Now, these ants that you're picturing right now they do not eat the leaves. Instead, they use the leaves to grow a fungal garden, as you saw earlier. So they're little farmers. Now, this fungal garden acts as the ant colony's food source. And maybe the name fungal garden is a little misleading because it's not just fungus. It has fungus, but it also has a resonant bacterial community. And the fungus and the bacteria, they work together for efficient degradation of plant biomass in the system. Now, I want to discuss the fungal garden in a little more detail. So now we're going to look at a cartoon. So if you think of the fungal garden, it's about the size of a softball. Leaf material is placed on the top of the garden, and it's degraded as it moves through the garden over about a four to six week time period. So plant material in the top, middle, and bottom of the garden is at initial, intermediate, and advanced stages of degradation. Therefore, the microbial community dynamics of the leaf cutter ant fungal garden system. They're a challenge to assess because the high heterogeneity of species composition and activities that are changing across space and across time. So this is a perfect example of symbiosis. This high heterogeneity is actually essential for efficient plant deconstruction. So if the fungus and the bacteria, if they're separated from each other, you no longer get efficient plant deconstruction. You need both. So over 50 million years, this symbiotic system has evolved into a textbook case of mutualistic symbiosis, where all species involved both benefit and are needed for this important interaction. Now, our new mass spectrometry imaging tools, they allow us to both map and understand chemical reactions in complex systems at a micro scale level by analyzing 12 micron thick sections. So that's what we're doing here. We're analyzing 12 micron thick sections of the fungal garden. Now 12 microns thick, that's not thick, that's thin. 12 microns is about the thickness of plastic cling wrap. So we're getting unprecedented molecular detail with our micro scale analyses. Now remember, what are we interested in? We're interested in chemical reactions in the fungal garden. We want to see and find valuable compounds or metabolites made from plants and the precise and exact fungal and bacterial enzymes responsible for making them. And plant cell walls, they're, they're actually quite complex. So if you think of plant cell walls, they're made up of hard to digest polymers. You have sugar polymers making up hemicellulose and cellulose, and then you also have aromatic polymers making up lignin. So we are on the hunt for microscale hotspots or activity regions which contain metabolites indicative of digestion of both these sugar and aromatic plant polymers. Our technology, it scans across the sections of the fungal garden ecosystem using a high-powered laser. The sections are coated with laser energy absorbing matrix so the ions can be identified, they can be quantified, they can be mapped in these metabolite imaging mass spectrometry experiments. Then we know the areas we're interested in, so we can perform a deep dive on the proteins in these microscale hotspots or activity regions to see what enzymes in these regions 
what ones are there, and also who is making them. So the specific fungal and bacterial species making the enzymes. And what did we find? Well, the short answer is many detailed chemical reactions in the fungal garden, many that we are very interested in. And most importantly, we could clearly see that in this multi-member system, there was one clear winner who was degrading the plant polymers, and it's the fungus. Fungus is the dominant degrader of these plant polymers. So you might be thinking, well, both the fungus and the bacteria are needed. So is the fungus degrading the plant polymers, why does it need the bacteria in the garden for efficient degradation? Well, what we learned with this analysis is the bacterial enzymes, they're participating mainly in energy metabolism pathways, where the resonant bacteria can transform those previously digested plant polymers and make them into metabolites that are important, such as vitamins and amino acids, which benefit the bacteria, of course, but they also benefit the entire ecosystem by accelerating the fungal growth, thereby also accelerating plant mass degradation. So our mapping at the molecular level, it gave us a front row seat to see how the community in the fungal garden ecosystem is really working together, that symbiosis. And if the farmer ant could speak to us now, he might say, it's the community that matters the most. Now, to summarize our points that we saw, we could see specific species and interactions and functions occurring for this efficient plant deconstruction and bioproduct production in this ecosystem. On a detailed le level, we could see that the fungus is breaking down the plant components, such as cellulose and hemicellulose into high energy sugars and lignin into small aromatic compounds. Then the bacteria can further metabolize these breakdown products and other useful byproducts. So we're taking a page from this community playbook and maybe these breakdown products and compounds synthesized by the fungus and bacteria, they could replace commonly used petroleum-based molecular building blocks to make biofuels and to make less toxic paints and adhesives. So we're learning from nature. We now have molecular level insights on how nature takes a renewable resource like plant material and transforms it into useful bio-based compounds that can improve our everyday lives. And I think we should all make it a priority to both conserve and study nature. There are so many fascinating processes just waiting to be discovered and short of talking shop with that leaf cutter ant. We now have the tools, we've developed the tools necessary to provide molecular level insights that nature has to share in our future. And I'm okay with the idea that our future might just include more fungus among us. Thank you everyone for attending my talk.